in Japan. I'm excited. Let's go. So, some of these holidays I'm gonna mention have years of fun, tradition, and culture and history all into one. Again, as I said earlier, I did miss a few good ones, so don't get angry. There's a lot of festivals all throughout Japan, a lot of good holidays I did miss. Some of these go back thousands of years, and they still find a way to adapt to the modern world even today, which is pretty cool if you ask me, because I'm a history and a modern freak at the same time. All right. So, without further ado, first things first, my favorite holiday in Japan, Shogatsu. Now, if you're not Japanese, raise your hand if you know what this means. Nobody, cool. All right, Shogatsu is New Year. Next slide, please. This is one of the biggest times in the year. Traditionally, it used to be celebrated in the lunar calendar like it is in Korea and China, but it's now following the Western Gregorian calendar, it is celebrated on January 1st for three days. It's one of the two central points of the year Japanese will tend to go home to their families. And that means traveling prices go up. There's a little things that they do around, you know, Shogatsu. Hatsumode is a first visit to the shrine or temple. Even if you're not religious, it's something people do. It, but it, it's usually done within the, any of the three days. Like when I was there in 2013, I went the second day. So hey, cool. you could buy things called omamuri, meaning charms. And they can range from anything from good driving, to good studying. I think there's some romance ones, drive, and uh, other dating events. And it's what it looked like right here. Have you ever gotten one before? Raise your hand if you did. I used to have a five, and I lost all but two. Yeah, not really lucky. But this is the best part about Shogatsu, the one I always get excited about, New Year food. This is called Osechi Ryori, and it can contain, as the next slide will explain, kombu, boiled seaweed, kapaboko, or fish cakes, kurikintong, mashed up potato with chestnut, Kikira gobo, my absolute favorite, I love gobo, which is burdock root, and kurumame, black sweetened soybeans. Sometimes sashimi and sushi are part of the list, but there's also another thing, mochi, rice cake. And the best thing about it is the soup. It's called ozoni. Now, I didn't include this on my slide, but there's other cultures that mentioned ozoni. Uh, Korean culture has a book on their new year, kind of similar. Not in books, but what it represents. And there's also used as decoration mochi, is called kagami mochi. If I got the kanji wrong, I'm sorry. Best thing about ozoni is my region and sometimes my family, it, the recipe is always different. Tokyo, chicken and carrots are usually found in it. In Kansai, it's more vegetarian friendly. It's just good, no matter who makes it, wherever I've been, I've ate it, good. All right, next is Sensibun. And this is an interesting one, because it's February 3rd. And it is basically an older holiday to clean the evil of the former year. It's not so much recognized as far as I understand. I could be wrong. And it has what's called mame mame, meaning bean scattering, done by the head of the household. Sometimes beans are thrown out the door or to a family member who is dressed as an oni to scare children to the behaving. And there's different ways that it's celebrated throughout Japan, like Kansai has their own way of handling it. Anyways, what's going on with that? Uh oh, someone's coming. And Oni's here! Alright, everyone is just. Next slide, please! Oni wa hoko, fuku wa yuchi! And I found one by myself, you guys suck. <sighs> Alright, next is Hina Matsuri. Does anybody know what this is? No? Cool! Alright, it's March 3rd, Doll Festival. Usually it's known as Girls Day around here. The custom of the displaying of dolls started in the Heian period. The Heian period is an old traditional times when I do believe the capital was right after Naga or Kyoto. Anyways, around that time. Dolls are most believed to contain bad spirits, and people used to put straw dolls and throw them and burn them or put them out to sea. And nowadays they're just put out to sea for spectators. 
But due to Fisherman catching the nets, when everyone leaves, Fisherman hit back up and burn him. However, if you have a Hinamatsu reset, do not put it away late. After March 3rd, you've got to put it away. Why? Superstition says, your daughter may marry late. You can't have that, no. Strong independent woman? Nah. Now, in Hita City in Oita Prefecture in Kyushu, they have a huge museum dedicated to this, which I can only find a few pictures because apparently I sub. I went to the uh, museum myself though, and it's just absolutely breathtaking. If there's any way you want to go to experience Hina Matsuri, that's where you gotta go. Next is Kodomo no Hi, Children's Day. And this is what's called Koi no Mori Flags, represents the children of the family. And this holiday is May 5th. Who likes the month of May? Raise your hand. Love May. It's one of the prettier ones. I know why you like it. All right. It used to honor the men or the boys of the family, but now in the recent years, it was used to now honor every child and the mother. Similar holidays were or still are celebrated in China, Japan, Hong Kong, Vietnam, and Korea. Originally called Hangul no Seku, and it was celebrated on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. It is part of the infamous Golden Week. Which reminds me, Golden Week, let's go. These are the following holidays that you will usually get a week of free time off of school, maybe work um, the former Emperor Showa's birthday, which was on April 29th. The former Minori no Hi was on April 29th, now it's May 4th. Now the Showa day to honor Emperor Showa is from 2007. Constitution Memorial Day, Kenpo Kinenbi, May 3rd, and the first thing, Kodomo no Hi. Now this is one of the prettier ones, Tanabata. Tanabata was based off a Chinese festival. I cannot pronounce the name of it, so yeah. CC, I think, I could be wrong, don't hurt me. Basically, it represents the star-crossed lovers, Orihime, and I think Hikoboshi, I can't remember the names right now. And it was basically about the two star constellations that would meet around this time within the Milky Way. Kind of a romantic tale, if you will. Present day, people celebrate by generally writing wishes, sometimes in forms of poems, on small bits of paper, hanging them on the boo or a wish tree. Have you guys ever seen that before? No? Yes? Alright. You can also see paper kimono, origami, streamers, and nets, and there's even paper trash bags used to, uh, for cleanliness, and a couple of them have paper purses. This picture right here, with this more colorful one, that is in Sendai. That is part of Tanabata Festival Sendai. And this is an old ukiyo-e from during Tanabata and around Edo period, late Edo. Which is late 1850s, 60s. Now, next bigger part we call it in Japan, Obon. Who knows what Obon is? If you're not Japanese, if you know what Obon is, raise your hand. Pretty much. Every culture had one originally, right? Alright. Again, this is a region-based thing. Timing can be anywhere. The east, like in Kanto, will generally have it around July, whereas down a little bit down south, like in Kyushu, it could be anywhere in August. And it is the second time that people will pilgrim back. So, and here's an interesting thing. Obon is even celebrated here in Fresno. So, we're gonna have Kate here, Kate Asai, talk a little bit about Obon festivals in Fresno. Hi guys. Um, I actually have a question. How many of you have been to the down, um, downtown um, temple? Okay. Well, there actually is an old downtown temple. We actually recently moved to a new temple. But the downtown one, we used to have a giant obon. And we still have obon nowadays, but it's a little smaller. Um, what happens is a bunch of different booths, people who come from all around, um, original people who moved here from Japan would come and sell their wares, not just um, mochi or other things like that, but they'd actually sell kimonos, yukatas, and so you'll actually see some of this later on during this. But also, um, during these we'd have many different types of dances. So there would be hand dances, fan dances, and um, ones with fresh patches. So there's ones with the folding pants, which are these types. Um, Kachi Kachi is what she actually has on her belt. You would actually see 
see things like um, the Mega Dancers also have things close to them. Um, other dances also use the round gun, which we carry on our backs. Um, there's many different designs to them, and some of them actually have some longer ones. Um, another thing is the outfits that we wear, the kimonos, they actually have male versions of these as well, but the female ones, they will take about half an hour to put on. <laughs> but it's really fun to dance, and it's really fun to just hang out with people. Anyone can come, and anyone can just dance. Most people don't know the dances, and so you basically just follow along with the people that will be dancing. Pretty much is a big circle and everyone has fun and this has been going on even in other countries. Japan has a lot of summer holidays with other countries if you guys haven't noticed. Alright, next slide. Thank you Kate. Oops, gotcha gotcha boo. Alright, as you can see this is from the form of the hand dances, a picture taken in the Obonodori. I think this was in, somewhere in Kansai, I can't remember. And again, there's also, you know, different by region, that's the word of the evening, different by region. Right. Another picture of Obon, and you can see different colorful clothing or hapi, which you can see the straw hat way over there, the far left. Alright, next slide please. Since there's Japanese communities in Argentina, Brazil, in the States, and Canada, they tend to carry on the cultural tradition. Even Fresno, as we mentioned, had one. Parts of uh, even Korea, Malaysia, and China have their own traditional Buddhist times to honor the dead. Can't remember the name of it now, I do apologize. Now this is for children again, Shichi Gosan. I kind of cheated, told you translation, I should have quizzed you on that. Anyways, it's held near the closest weekend near November 15th. It's meant for three and seven year old girls and three to five year old boys. The reason why is because back in the old samurai times, Three was with the age when the samurai family could stop, you know, shaving the child's hair. Five was when the boy could wear hakama. Seven was when the girl could start wearing the cords around her obi like an adult. Children are usually dressed in traditional, you know, kimono or hakama. Nowadays, Western has become a trend, but not for this family. So as you can see, happens a lot. And then, closer to the end, last but not least, is the current emperor's birthday, Emperor Showa. Celebrated for current Emperor Akihiko, not Showa, he said, sorry. My bad, I do apologize. Akihiko is born on December 23rd, and the public ceremony usually can take place within the Imperial Palace, and the Emperor himself will actually come out to acknowledge the crowd, and it's a time where, you know, people kind of gather and show their support. Even today, despite having no power, much like in England, the royal family is still adored. So after his greetings, we'll see so a lot of people just kind of just cheer and wave the flag. That is the current emperor and his wife, the empress. And that's some picture waving the flag. All right. And Christmas in Japan. And as you can see, yep, KFC is involved. And I hate it. <laughs> All right, we're not, not exactly how we celebrate it, but this is how they do. Since Shogatsu is at the end of the year, and it's more related to the cultural history, Christmas is still a relatively new thing. In comparison, it's meant more for couples and, you know, you know, company parties and all that. And yes, you do eat fried chicken. Somebody in the 70s from KFC had a great marketing campaign. And basically, sushi and cakes are also part of it. KFC has been around for it for a long time, and I have no clue how. Japan. Alright, so you, during this time there's also illuminations. Tokyo has a lot of them and they're really, really pretty. And the cakes, god the cakes. Oh, I miss it, I'm gonna go back. So there's pretty much it with the more illuminations. And Shibuya is a big one. So yeah, thank you. That was the end for the awkward presentation. Thank you for your patience.